I'm back after seven months. I had a lot of uh, real life things that I needed to deal with over the past few months, but I'm back now and a lot of things have changed as you can see here on the table. We completely migrated from Micro Four Thirds cameras to full frame cameras. Our primary photography camera used to be the Panasonic G9, it is now the Nikon Z5. Our main videography camera used to be the Panasonic GH5 and now it is the Canon R6. So what happened? What made us change? Well, first let's start with some context and some history. My journey with Micro Four Thirds cameras started with the Panasonic G7. Back when I first got this camera, there weren't a lot of cameras on the market that shot 4K and all of them were much more expensive than the G7. Back then, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras didn't really have good video specs. In fact, the G7 at the time was the most affordable camera that shot 4K. I made a whole retrospective video on the G7 and you can go see that either here or here. I always forget which side it ends up on. But uh, you can go see that video where I talk about the significance of the Panasonic G7. But after that, I got the Panasonic GH5, which at the time was the first camera that shot 4K 10-bit 4.2.2. The video quality coming from the GH5 was simply amazing and we liked the system so much we went all in. I got a Metabone speed booster, we got a bunch of lenses and then we got the Panasonic G9 which became our primary photography camera. So what made us change? What made us go from micro four thirds to full frame? It wasn't just one reason, it was a bunch of things. First and foremost is image quality. Back when we got the GH5 and the G9, these sensors were competing with the APS-C cameras of the time. But as time went on and as manufacturers started developing mirrorless cameras, we got much much better APS-C and full frame cameras with newer sensors while we were stuck with the same 20 megapixel sensors in the Micro Four Thirds cameras. And there wasn't much in terms of new releases. I mean the G9 was the last major camera Panasonic released before the GH6. This quality gap just kept getting wider and wider. And in reality, the smaller size of the Micro Four Thirds sensors has some real disadvantages in low light. Even if you manage to compensate for the higher ISOs by lowering the shutter speeds by utilizing the amazing IBISes that these cameras have, you still get a lot of noise if you don't have enough light, even at base ISO of 200. The second thing was depth of field. With phone cameras getting better and better every day, people are starting to associate professional photography with shallow depth of field. Shallow depth of field is something that phones still cannot do naturally and is much, much easier to achieve with full frame cameras than with MFT, especially at wider focal lengths. On the videography side of things, there is something that not a lot of people are talking about and that is the flexibility of full frame files while editing. When editing the files from the R6, you can push and pull the exposure and the colors to a great extent before the files start to fall apart, much more so than the GH5 or the G9 or even the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. There is a latitude that the R6 has that these two don't, even though all of them shoot 10-bit video, there's just a latitude that these two cameras don't have and I think it's because of the full frame uh, size of the sensor. Even with the Z5, which has a Super 35 crop when shooting 4K and does not even shoot 10-bit. Next up, and this is Panasonic's Achilles heel, and I'm so disappointed to see they've not changed this with the GH6, and that's the autofocus. While the G9 did get that update that improved its autofocus greatly, and the system as a whole is I feel like um, there's some false reports on it because the, the autofocus of the G9 at least in my tests and in my real uh, world usage is good. It tracks decently, it sticks to the subject, but is nothing compared to Canon's dual pixel autofocus. And having a good, reliable autofocus system at your disposal means you can focus on the creative side of things rather than struggling and wrestling with focus. And lastly, what made people gravitate towards the MFT system was its size advantage. But full frame mirrorless cameras and lenses got really small and it seems like MFT cameras are just getting bigger and bigger. So the size advantage is just not a factor anymore. So how about the GH6? It is a really impressive sounding camera. However, it's just a little bit too late. I wish it was released like six months ago before I got the R6. I might still get one for long form video content um, because I already have everything for the system, all the batteries, lenses and everything. I just need the, the camera body. But I'm already invested in Canon's R system as well and the R5C and the C70 cameras might do me better. So I'm not really sure here. 
Overall, I'm quite satisfied with our move from MFT to full frame. Truth be told, the image quality of our photos and videos have improved a lot. And as a side note, I just love Nikon's S series of lenses. They have something special about them. They're some of the best lenses I've ever used. So be on the lookout for a full review of the Z5 and the R6 coming soon. So that's it for this video. My first video back after seven months. I hope it was useful and you found it informative. So please like this video, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Till next time.